يا ذا الأسماء الحسنى يا خالقنا غفرانا نسألك وأنت الأسماء نأمل عفوك سبحانه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, the name that we come to today is Malik out of the series of the 99 names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Malik So if you say with me هو الله الذي هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو and what's after that? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and then Al-Malik. After that is Malik. Inshallah, bin Allah, through this we will try our best to memorize these names. Now, Malik means the king, and there is also a very uh, close meaning to this, which is, which is Malik, the one who is the owner. Though both of them are different, and there's also another name of Allah Azza wa Jal in the, in the 99 names, which is Malikul Mulk, the one who, who owns the entire dominion. The one who owns the entire dominion. So you have Malik, which is king. You have Malik, who is the owner. And you have Malikul Mulk, the owner of the dominion. Now, Malik comes from the one who has the milk. Milk. Uh, Malik is for, with, with Mulk. So mulk is dominion. So Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah, uh, Surah Mulk he has said, Tabarak alladhi biyadihi, biyadihi mulk Exalted is the one in whose hands is the, is the sovereignty. The whole dominion, the sovereignty is in his hands. So there you have with, with Allah Azza wa Jal being the one who, has, who is the king, there is mulk, which is to have sovereignty. And when you have Malik, one who's an owner, that comes from milk, which is ownership. Now Malik is one who will be a king. Malik is one who's a king. So his ownership obviously is quite vast. If you're talking about a normal king on the earth. If you're talking about Allah Azza wa Jal, then it's everything. Then it's everything. However, when you say somebody is an owner of something, that means they own something of this earth which Allah Azza wa Jal has given them permission to own for a certain time and a certain period. That's what it means. So, for example, I could be Malikul Bayt. I could be the owner of my house at this moment. That house, that space of the earth, Allah has given me permission to own that. Or the money that I've got in my pocket to a certain time, He has given me permission to own that. Whereas, when you refer this to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza, Azza wa Jal, when he's referring to himself, if, it's re if he's referring to himself in the, while, while we're in this world, then yes, he has given us permission to say that we can own something. He has even given permission to certain individuals amongst us who, who may become kings to call themselves Muluk, kings, or Malik, the king. They, they can call themselves that. But when it comes to the day of judgment, Allah Azza wa Jal has taken all of that to himself. So he has said, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Who is the one that owns all sovereignty on this day? Who is that? Uh, this is in Surah Ghafir, ayah number 16. He has said, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ who has, who has the ownership on this day? And no one will actually speak at that time. لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَحَّارِ Allah will then give the answer because no one will even have the have the, have the audacity or the courage to say anything on that day without his permission. So at that time, Allah Azza wa Jal will give the answer himself and he will say, it is for Allah, myself, Al-Wahid, the one who is alone, the one who, has, the, the, the one who has power over all of his servants or can show his wrath over his servants, can, can show that he is in total control over his servants, it's for him. Now, the reason why the Malaika, because Malaika is also a, um, you know, we, we know the Malaika are the angels. And if you look at the word Malaika, you will find the same meme, lamb, calf inside the word Malaika. They're the angels. Why has Allah 
given them, or why is the Arabic language referred to them as Malaika? The answer to that is that Allah Azza wa Jal has given these angels parts of his parts of what he wants to be done in his kingdom. He gives them the power to do or, or to act or to do certain things or carry out certain uh, commands of his through his will. So for example, um, when the angels will, will bring the rain, when the angels will move the, move the clouds, when the angels will, will make the winds move, move across, when for example in the womb of a mother the angel will come and it will start writing the rizq or the provisions of this and how long it will live or whether it is, it is fortunate, unfortunate and so on. All these things Allah Azza wa Jalla has given them the permission to carry out certain commands of His on the earth so the mulk or the dominion, though, though Allah Azza wa Jalla, He doesn't share His kingship, He doesn't share that. But what He has done is that He has given permission to these servants of His who are the angels to carry that out. So therefore, because of that, 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 that aspect that they have, the permission from Allah to carry out ahkam or commands in His, in his mulk, in His dominion, they are called the malaika. They are called the malaika. So there's a clear link between that. Now, if you look in the Qur'an, you will find that there is, in the beginning of the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal, he, he starts off by saying, Maliki Yawmid Deen, in Surah Fatiha. And there is a difference of Qira'ah here. Both of them have been narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. According to Hadith of Tirmidhi, there is Maliki Yawmid Deen and Maliki Yawmid Deen. So Maliki Yawmiddin means owner of the day of recompense. Owner of the day when Allah will give people their jaza or He will give them back, either He will punish them or He will give them a reward. That's Maliki Yawmiddin. The other one is Maliki Yawmiddin, which is king of the day of recompense. So both of these qira'at, both of these recitations have been reported from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and both of them are correct. However, <coughs> For us to understand what these mean, Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah, he says that some people have said that what Malik, if you say Malik Yawmiddin, the meaning of that will be Yamliku Yawmiddin, that Allah owns that day. He owns that day, so what does that mean? فَيَكُونُ الْفِعْلُ وَاقِعًا عَلَى الْيَوْمِ نَفْسِهِ So that means that the whole day itself, to, to, carry, to do anything to the day, to make the day long for certain individuals, to make the day short for other individuals, Allah has the power to do that on that day. Allah owns that day to do that. And it could also mean, يَمْلِكُ فِي din. It could also mean that within anything that happens within that day of judgment, Allah owns that. So for example, He owns all the things that will be there on the day of judgment. Now, if somebody says that, why is it that Allah has referred to Himself as Maliki Yawmiddin, He is the owner of the day of recompense, when that day hasn't even come yet. That day hasn't even arrived yet. So there is a, there's a whole question here, why is Allah then telling us something which, which hasn't occurred yet? Now, Imam Qurtubi goes into say, saying that if you say, for example, this person is a person who is about to go around the Kaaba, about to perform the Hajj, about to become Al-Hajj, one who is about to perform the Hajj. You are, you are able to say that for something which is in the future. So it doesn't mean that this thing hasn't, you know, it, it doesn't mean that you can't actually say, say Maliki on Bidin when the actual thing hasn't occurred. And he, he then says that, that another way of looking at this is that according to different tafasir and according to different mufassirin is to say that this Malik, this, this fact that Allah is the owner refers to his qudra, refers to his power and that he has power over everything within that day and power over everything that will happen on that day because the one, according to, to the Arabs, the one who has, one who's the owner is the one who has power over that thing you have power over the things that you own and Allah Azza wa will have obviously all the power, power that, you know, whatever power He will show on that day, all that will be His. Now, according to Imam Qurtubi, he has, said, he has said that the first one, which is that He owns all the different things on that day, that is more appropriate to, to say. Now, there is also another name, which is at the end of Surah Al-Qamar. You will find the name Malik. 
ملیک عند ملیک مقتدر عند ملیک مقتدر نه ملیک is again from meme lam kaf which shows that there is ownership here but it's mubalagha it means that there is an there, there is a, a, a great extension to that to, to the ability of ownership it means allah azza wa jal really really owns that he has a great extent of his ownership which shows that he is the only one that will have the power on that on that day or right now even when he has when he has given us the power he has he has only given us power to own something through his permission which really means that he is still the owner of that thing so we are, we have got no ownership and when we when we go away from this world it will only transfer from one ownership to another ownership and allah will choose a new person to become a malik or person who's owning what i had and it will transfer, he will just transfer it from one individual to another individual. That's all he'll do. Until finally, Allah Azza wa Jal, he has said in Surah Al-Anbiya, يَرِثُ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضُ وَأَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُ Allah said, okay, my, my close servants will, will, will eventually have the dominion. But then he has also said that in the end, finally, يَرِثُ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا Allah will then take back all those who are on the earth, all the, the whole earth itself and all those who are on the earth. Which means that the final owner, when it goes back to one ownership on this earth and another ownership, finally it will go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. Now there is a, you know, there's a hadith of Bukhari where Allah Azza wa Jal, he refers, him, him, he refers to himself as Malikul Muluk, the king of kings. That um, ayah in Surah Al-Ghafir, which is ayah number 16 in Surah number 40. Allah Azza wa Jal has said, Limanil mulku yawm, who has the dominion on this day, who has the ownership on this day. And then he has said, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar, only I have that ownership on this day. Now from that, from that hadith, from that ayah, you will find that in the tafsir itself, there are explanations to do with the, uh, uh, in Sahih al-Bukhari, you will find an explanation by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that Allah azza, azza wa on the day of judgment, he will say, Ana malikul muluk, ayna mulukul ard. I am the king of kings. So where are the kings of the earth? I am the king of kings. So where, where are the kings? Now this Allah will say, uh, so he will say on the day of judgment by showing his absolute authority to the, to the whole of mankind, to the whole of jinns. That all these kings that were on the earth, all the kings that were on the earth, all the people who got to rule others in a country, in a continent, wherever it was, in a place, whatever Allah gave them in terms of their dominion, Allah Azza wa will then show his authority over them as being the real king. And Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah says that for a person on this earth, according to ahadith, for a person on this earth to call himself a king of many, a king of all the things that are available or a king of kings, that is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala detests and he dislikes and he will challenge on the day of judgment. So, according to a hadith in Bukhari 4812 and in Muslim 2787, there is a hadith, Yaqwidu Allah Azza wa Jal will seize the whole of the earth on the day of judgment. And then with his right hand, and we, we don't say that he has a left hand, right hand, we don't say that Allah has a hand like this, and we don't say that. Whatever Allah refers to that, He refers to that. But with His right hand, He will then, He, he will then wrap up the, wrap up the heaven. So He's, got, he's already seized the earth, and He will wrap up the, the heaven or the sky. ثم يقول, and then Allah Azza wa will say, أنا الملك أين ملوك الأرض? I am the king, where are the kings of the earth? In a separate hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and this has been reported in Bukhari 6205 and in many other, you know, Muslim 2143 and many other different uh, books of hadith. Allah Azza wa Jal, 
his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says inna akhnas min inda allah rajulun uh, the, the the worst of the names or those names that allah azza wa jal he 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 will you know he he finds it very low very low is that a man will be named on this earth as malikul amlak as a as a king who owns all the ownerships all the things that to, are to be owned so and in a hadith in in muslim it says la malika illa allah azza wa jal there is no true malik or no true owner except allah azza wa jal allah almighty in a riwayah or in a narration of muslim abu hurairah radiyallahu anhu he says that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said aghyadhu rajulin yawm al qiyama wa akhbathuhu rajul the the most the one that will make allah azza wa jal really angry on the day of judgment the one that is the most impure of the people on the day of judgment yusamma malik al amlak la malika illa allah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he will be named as malik al amlak the king of those who owns many different ownerships you know he has he owns more or less everything to to have that title allah azza wa jal will be very angry with such a person um who has that name now the same can be said with it, it it is wrong again to name someone the name that they you know there are certain names for example you have shahanshah shahanshah in 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 um, farsi or in other language which would mean that he is the king of the entire earth the king of the entire earth that again ahmad ibn hanbal rahimahullah says that i, I asked sorry um shahan shah sorry this sufyan sorry sufyan radiyallahu anhu sufyan rahimahullah he said that shahan shah from the ajam or from the people who are the non arabs who named certain individuals as the king of the entire earth this was a name that they gave to certain individuals that was that is also the same as what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said malikul amlak or malikul muluk or whatever the, the name is that they are the king of many different you know king of the entire earth or king of whatever they, there is ownership of they are king of that it is wrong to name someone like that so if somebody has you know it, it is wrong to have a person who has a name that says that i am the king of the entire earth king of the earth it 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 is wrong because only allah azza wa jal has the has the um you know he, he has the authority to have such a name now to name someone just to say them that they are king that is fine to say that they are king on this earth that is fine so the the dalil or the evidence of that is that in surah baqarah ayah number 247 allah azza wa jal when he talked about talut he said uh, and the and the prophet he actually says he said inna allah qad ba'atha lakum talut malika allah is about to send a a king that will be a king for you his name is talut he will become a king for yourself and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a in a hadith and this hadith is in bukhari and it say <coughs> bukhari 2788 muslim 1912 allah azza wa jal his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was he used to go to the house of umm haram bint milhan now umm haram was the wife of ubada bin samit radiyallahu anhu and if you remember rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know he would go to different different uh, um, houses and one of the <coughs> houses he was, he would go to was was this one and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would go there and umm haram radiyallahu anha she would feed or she would give offer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam some food on many occasions when he came there and he visited her so on this occasion what happened is that she gave him food and then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was was getting you know he he, he was um, lying down she was she was gently either combing his hair or oiling his hair or stroking his hair whatever it was the case and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam fell asleep and when he fell asleep <coughs> he then woke up 
and he, he, was, he woke up laughing. And she said, what is, وَمَا يُدْحِكُكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ She said, what is making you laugh, Messenger of Allah? He said, نَاسٌ مِّنْ أُمَّتِي عُرِضُوا عَلَيَّ غُزَاتًا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He said, There's been, that there are some people of my ummah who have been presented to me in a dream, who will be in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, fighting in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. يَرْكَبُونَ ثَبَجَ هَذَا الْبَحْرِ مُلُوكًا عَلَى الْأَسِرَّةِ they will be on a ship on this, on this um, uh, sea that they will travel across the sea. And when I saw them, they were like kings on thrones. Mulukan ala al asirra. Aw mith, aw qala mithlan muluki ala al asirra. Oh, he said, like kings that are on thrones. Now, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said this, then she said, Messenger of Allah, make dua that I become from them. That I am actually, you know, I, I'm a woman who's blessed to be with, with those people. So Rasulullah made dua for her that she become from them. And then Rasulullah put his head back down again. And after a while he woke up again. And he woke up laughing. And she says, what, what's making you laugh, Messenger of Allah? He said again the same thing. He said, there are certain people from my ummah who will be in the path of Allah. Who will, be on, who will cross this sea on a ship or however they cross this, ship, this, this sea and they will be like kings on thrones and she said Messenger of Allah make dua that I become from them and Rasulullah said, this time the second time he said you are from the first he said you are from the first now what happened is subhanallah they say that, uh, this is in, recorded in the history that in the time of Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan radiallahu anhu she actually went amongst the, uh, the soldiers to a certain expedition and they had to cross the sea and she was amongst them on a ship and they crossed the sea and they were Ghuzat and Fisabila, those who were you know, warriors in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal and then when she came off that ship now they're going to get back on again and travel a second time she came off and they were riding on, on a piece of land she got onto her animal and as soon as she got off her an, uh, on her animal, she fell down and with that fall that she fell on the earth, she became Shahida. She became Shahida. So the second, she, had, she didn't have the opportunity to ride that ship a second time. Why? Rasulullah also made dua. When he woke up the second time, he said what? He said, you are from the first. I mean, at the first time you will ride it. Second time, you're not going to be with them again the second time. And subhanAllah, this is one of the mu'jizat or one of the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So, for the whole point of narrating this hadith, or Imam, uh, Imam Qurtubi narrating this hadith is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said that these ghuzat or these warriors in the path of Allah, they are like muluk, muluk uh, ala al-asirra, they are like kings on the throne. So for a person to name someone and to say, you know, these group of people are looking like kings on, a thr on thrones, it's okay. And for you to mention and say that there is a certain king or something, that's fine. But to say malikul amlak, one who has... The one who is the king of everything, king of all the things that, they, that you can own, that is something which is, is detested and you should not name or give anyone a title uh, like that. Or when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, according to hadith in Ibn Majah, he said, Zuyat li al ardu faraitu masharikaha wa magharibaha. Allah showed me a vision in which He brought to my attention, brought to my eyes. He, he, he shrunk the whole of the uh, earth in front of my eyes, so I was able to see the east and I was able to see the west. My ummah or my community of my people, they, their, their dominion or their sovereignty or their kingship will stretch out to the extent of what was shown to me. Meaning that the Muslims eventually will have the whole of the East and the West within their, within their power. So this, this Imam Qurtubi is again saying that, the, the, uh, this is an evidence to say that you can say Mulk, the, having dominion, having, having the name Malik, having the main name Muluk, you can attribute it to certain individuals. Now there is a, <coughs> another um, part which is Malakut Malakut 
Now what is what actually is Malakut? Malakut again has occurred in the Holy Quran in Surah Yasin verse number 83 it's also in certain ahadith again it has meem lam kaf inside and it means to have the power of ownership some ulama have said and this is what Qurt, imam qurtubi says that some have tried to say that malakut is a word that only is a dominion or an ownership of the ghayb or the unseen whereas Whereas Malik is something which is to do with the seen and the unseen, the ghayb and the shahada. But Imam Qurtubi has said, no, this, this does not really make, uh, this, this is not really appropriate to say. Because in the Holy Quran, in Surah Yasin, Ayah number 83, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Alladhi biyadihi malakutu kulli shay. In whose hands is the ownership of everything? And he has used the word malakut there, which means that whatever is seen or unseen, Allah Azza wa Jal has it within His power. And that, ref that word refers to the seen and the unseen. Now, <clears throat> the, what is it that when you own, when Allah has given you, when Allah has said, you are a Malik, what, what, when are you able to use that word appropriately? Imam Qurtubi says that when you've got something which others would want, when you've got a gift, a ni'mah, when you've got something that keeps you happy, when you've got something that, that, that is lustful or something that you desire, something that people desire, then all of these things have, uh, have, the, have the link to the, to the word mulk or to the word, um, uh, have, uh, to the word uh, malik or for you to actually have ownership over. That is why in, in the Holy Quran, in Surah ad dahr or Surah Insan, which is the 76 surah in the Quran, ayah number 20, Allah Azza wa Jal has said, In Jannah, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا Allah Azza wa Jal has talked about many different gifts in Jannah that the people of Jannah will have. And then he summed it up by saying that if you actually look in that direction and the blissful thing that they have, وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا you will see that they've got a great dominion within, within Jannah it, itself. So all these things that make one happy, you can actually say that you are the ownership, you, you are the owner of that and you've got the ownership of that. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Holy Quran when he, has, when he has talked about him being the king, he has also he is also attributed to that his greatness and the fact that he is so high and exalted. That is why in, in the Quran you will find in Surah Taha, verse number 114. Malik, the word king has been, or the name king has been used there. Al Haq, the truth has been used there. But before that, he preceded it with Fata'al Allah, which means that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is so high and exalted, Him being the king and Him being the truthful one, He has, he has that highness. And in, in the Holy Quran, Surah Al Hashr, in ayah number 23, Allah Azza wa Jal has said, Malikul Quddus, he has, he has used His name, Malik, meaning the one who is the king. And he, he then follows it by saying that He is Quddus. Meaning that he is sublime, he is absolutely exalted. And in the beginning of Surah Tabarak, you can see the same thing, same thing. Tabarak al biyadihi al-mulk. So each time Allah said that, and then further one place you will find it is in Surah Al-Jumu'ah. Surah Al-Jumu'ah, ayah number one, you will find Allah said, Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi al-malik al-quddus al-aziz al-hakim. So Allah has said, for him, for Allah Azza wa Jal, all the things that are in the earth, all the things that are in the heavens, all the things that are in the earth, everything does his tasbih, everything glorifies him. Who is the king? Who is the sublime? Who is the one of dignity? And who is the most wise? Allah Azza wa Jal, all the things do this for him. So again, you can see every time Allah has used the word Malik, you can see tasbih, meaning that others are praising him, glorifying him. He himself is glorified. He is most high. So that has been attributed to him and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said in a hadith and this hadith has been, uh, meant, uh, has been narrated in Ahmad 9600 also in Muslim 107 where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said ثَلَاثٌ لَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ وَلَا يَنْظُرُوا إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ There are three individuals, there are three individuals Allah Azza wa Jal will not talk to them on the Day of Judgment. This is quite severe. Allah Azza wa Jal will not talk to them on the Day of Judgment. And he will, not either, he will not give them any purification on the Day of Judgment. Meaning that they will not be purified from their sins that easily. 
وَلَا يَنظُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ And Allah will not even look at them, meaning that Allah will not look at them with His eyes of mercy. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمًا They will have a tormenting punishment on that, on that day. And one of them, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he mentioned, he said, الْمَلِكُ الْكَذَّابِ The king that is a great liar. If there is a king on the earth and Allah has given him power on the earth and he has used that, he has had the power. Now once you, once you are a, um, once, once you've got the power, then once you've got the power, then why would, why would you want to actually, you know, you, you're a king, you're a king. Why would you want to become a great liar? You're a king, you're in authority, you're above people. You tell someone to imprison someone, they'll imprison him. You tell someone to release someone, they'll release him. So having all that power, and then on top of that, on top of that, when you've got no need to lie, when you've got no, then you still lie. Allah Azza wa Jal will not talk to them on the Day of Judgment. He will not purify them on the Day of Judgment. He will not even look at them with his eyes of mercy and they will have a tormenting punishment. Who are the other two individuals? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said the first individual, he said, he said Shaykhun Zan, Shaykhun Zan, which means that an old man who fornicates or an old man who commits adultery. If a, now we're not saying that it's okay for young men to do this, but a young man has got the desire, he's got this passion, he, he's, he's got this urge, great urge inside him. Now he's still, he still, it's haram for him to commit zina. And he will be punished on the day of judgment if he commits zina. But if an old man, the guy is already old, he's gone through his heydays, he's gone through his days that he's supposed to have that urge and passion. But he's become old now and he still wants to go and fornicate. He wants to go and commit zina, he wants to commit adultery. Allah Azza wa Jal will not look at him on the day of judgment with his eyes of mercy, not talk to him, not purify him, and he will have a tormenting punishment. And the third one is Ail Mustakbir, which is uh, there, there is a, a person who's poor. A person who's poor. Now if you're poor, you, you're one who is a beggar, whatever, then you should be humble. By your nature, you should be humble. But imagine there's a poor man, a poor person, and he's mustakbir, he's a person who's got kibr. He, he's proud. And what right have you got to be proud? You know, you're a beggar, you're a miskin, you're a person who <laughs> needs others to help you, and you then show pride, you show your arrogance to others. You have got no right to, I mean, other people, it's, it's wrong for others to do that, but for you, it's even worse. And that's why they will have, you know, th that's why Rasulullah said that <clears throat> they will have, um, Allah Azza wa would not show any of his mercy to them um, on, on the Day of Judgment. Now, what Imam, Imam um, Qurtubi does by, by doing this, by saying this, is that he reminds us of the mulk or the milk. Whether it is part of Allah's dominion he's given in our hands or whether it is any ownership on this earth Allah has given, we have to be careful of how we do our own, how we use this, tasarruf. Tasarruf means that how I, will, how I will use that, how I will go about with that power that Allah has given me. It could be a little power, it could be a great power. Now, certain people, subhanAllah and Azeem, if you, because in a, in a hadith, it says that when you actually get married, when you actually get married, then you have yamliku bud'a, means that the, the person has the, has the ownership of the, this, the, the, the entrance to the womb, the entrance to the womb, Allah has given this man the power to have this woman in his, in, in, you know, in, in, uh, her as, a, as a family member and to show that he is one, he is one who will look after her and he is one that will look after his womb. Now if a man then mistreats his wife, if a man mistreats his wife and if a man is horrible to his wife, then there will be a count on the Day of Judgment, unless the wife forgives her husband. There's, there's no such thing as because Allah has made you an owner of something, that you can do whatever you want. If a father mistreats his son, if a father mistreats his daughter, if an uncle mistreats his niece, mistreats his nephew, does something horrible, cruel to them, then there will be, there will be clearly, there will be accountability on the Day of Judgment. 
And when, a, when Allah Azza wa Jalla has given someone a, an opportunity to own something, to have something, and you, there's no need for you to mistreat a certain individual or do a certain thing, then, and, and you still carry on doing that, there's going to be even more of, a, of an account that you will have to face on the Day of Judgment. So that is the whole point of that. And when Allah Azza wa Jal, He has given it, He's given His, um, his, his dominion to some of his, to some of his uh, servants as, as prophets, you can see how they, how they use that. And this is the next thing that he, he comes to. So he says, for example, if you look at the one who, had, who was the greatest king of all times, from amongst the prophets is Sulaiman alayhi salam. But you will find that Sulaiman alayhi salam, when he, when he asked, from his power was that he had the power of the jinns. And one of those jinns once, you know, he wanted to, he wanted to have the the throne of uh, Bilqis, he wanted to have that in front of him, and it came. And then when it came, it, with a blink of an eye, within a blink of an eye, he saw that throne right in front of him. That is the power that they, they, they had. So then Allah, uh, Allah Prophet Allah, what did he say? He said, لِيَبْلُوَنِي أَأَشْكُرْ أَمْ أَكْفُرْ Allah is testing me to see whether I'm going to show um, ungratefulness to Allah or whether I'm going to be grateful to Allah. That is the way to show our ownership. Jazakumullah khair, inshallah, after the Maghrib Salah, we'll carry on for a little bit, inshallah, then we'll finish. We will continue from the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, Al Malik. Now, Al Malik, uh, we come to the point where Allah Azza wa Jal, his servant, Sulaiman, alayhi salam, he was a king on the earth, there was no other king like him. For he had the dominion not only over men, but he had the dominion over all men, over the whole of the entire earth. He had the dominion over the jinns at the same time. He had the dominion of the sovereignty over the birds, and over animals, and over many different creatures of God. <clears throat> and he even could speak the language of the, of the birds. So here, Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah, he narrates from, he, he says from the Quran, Surah An-Naml, ayah number 20-21, where Sulaiman alayhi salam, he's looking for the hoopoo bird, and he says, Mali la ara al-hudhud am kana min al-ghaibin, la u'adhibannahu a'adhaban shadeedan, aw la'adhbahannahu, aw la'yatiyanni bi sultanin mubin. He says, what's the matter, I don't see the, I don't see this bird that should bring me, that, that should, should be in my, in my presence. Why is he absent? Is he absent? If, he, if so, perhaps I will punish him a severe punishment, or I will torture him, or I will, or unless he comes to me with a clear authority, meaning that he comes to me with something which, which, will be, uh, which, which I will need, and there's a reason for him to be absent. So Imam, Imam Qurtubi mentions that, Subhanallah Azim, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had the choice of becoming a prophet as a king or becoming a prophet and living amongst the poor people. And Rasulullah he chose to be a prophet amongst the poor people. And Yakuna Nabiyan Abdan Aw Nabiyan Malikan and he had this choice and he 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 became from the from the poor people. And he, he says that I am a prophet La Akulu Muttaki'a. I don't even eat my food while I recline. So Rasulullah sallallahu one of his sunnahs was that when he would eat, he wouldn't, you know, like some kings, they might sort of put their, rest their arm on something and, and lean back and then, you know, eat, you know, in, in a way that shows that they've got kibber or they've got arrogance or something. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wouldn't do that. And he mentions, obviously, which I mentioned just before, just before the um, uh, salah, which is that anyone who's got any power needs to be careful of how you use that power. Anyone who has any dominion, any ownership, anything that you own, you know, we are going to be questioned on the Day of Judgment. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hide our faults. May He hide our faults because we all have plenty of faults. In the Holy Quran, when Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, there's another thing that He says in, in the uh, Imam Qurtubi says that when Allah Azza wa Jal, He has His power, there is nothing else that comes to His, comes to his, his power, anything near his, near his dominion, near His ownership. 
Because when Allah said, Tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulku wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Alladhi khalaq al-mawta wal-hayata. Allah says that I've got power over death, over life. I've got power over both of them. Right to the end of Surah Mulk, to the last verse when Allah says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرَ فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَا إِمْمَعِينَ Don't you see that the water that you have gushing out coming to yourselves and you drink from that water, if I was to take my power away, that power that I give you to have that water, if I was to take that away, how and who would be the one who would give you this gushing water? Imam Qurtubi says that Allah has the power to of uh, mujazat. Mujazat meaning that just as he has said in Maliki Yawmuddin, he has the power to give, give hasana, to give good deeds to the one who he wants to, or give, uh, give good outcome, or to give sayyat, to give bad outcomes to whoever he wants to. Who, who, if he wants, wants to give somebody sins, he, he, he has the power to do that. al intiqamul min ahli jara'im, he can avenge and take revenge of those who will be of the sinners. وَالْمُجَازَاتِ فِي مْتِثَالِ الْأَوَامِرِ Those people who will follow his orders, he was able to give them a reward. Allah has the power to, to um, forgive whoever he wants. He can turn away from whoever he wants. He has the power to do that. No other king will have the power to his extent. And that's quite obvious. But Imam Qurtubi is just narrating, he's just relating just the ayats of the Quran that have some narrations, some relationship to that. So he says that um, Sulaiman as being a king of the whole of the earth, because there, was not, there were not many kings on the earth that had the whole of the earth underneath their power. And certainly there was no one like Sulaiman but Sulaiman according to Surah An-Naml, ayah number 37, was able to say, "Irji' ilayhim falanati yannahum bi junud illa qibla lahum biha, wa la nukhrijannahum minha adillatan wa musaqirun." O who forbid you go back to Bilqis and to her kingdom, and you tell her that we are going to come, I'm, I'm going to bring an army about, and that army, you will not be able to see the end of that army when they, when they reach you. Now, sometimes when an army comes to you, you can see the, the front of the army and you can see where the army ends. So you can count, or got a rough count of the, of the army, of how many people have come. But he says, لا قبل لكم بها you will not see the extent of, the, of how many numbers. And they say that he sent such an army, subhanAllah al-Azim, that by the time they reached her kingdom, the last soldiers hadn't even left, left the kingdom of Sulaiman alayhi salam. So that, that's how great it was. He said, وَلَا نُخْرِجَنَّهُ مِنَا أَذِلَّةً وَهُمْ صَاغِرٌ And we're going to you know, exile them from that city, wherever they are, as people who are disgraced and people who are small and have no power whatsoever after this, once I come to, come, come to uh, that. Now, Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, he says, okay, this is Junood of a Malik on the earth. This is the power that a king who was the, one of the greatest kings Allah made on the earth could say and he did. But if you look at Allah Azza wa Junood, his, his soldiers, Allah has said in the Holy Quran, in Surah At-Tawbah, ayah number 40, وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا Allah helped Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a presence of his soldiers or his army which you don't even see. Which you don't even see. And he has said in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab, ayah number 9, فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ رِيحًا وَجُنُودًا لَمْ تَرَوْهَا I sent a wind in the battle of Ahzab and I sent a junood, uh, my soldiers, my army, I sent them that you did not see. Meaning the malaika. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in the Holy Quran in Surah Muddathir, ayah number 31, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُ No one knows the exact count of his army or, or, or his soldiers or his servants who he has got ready, occupied to carry out his command or come straight down to the earth and do something. No one has got that count except for Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. So you can see the comparison to any king on the earth and the king Allah Azza wa Jal. And he says in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 26, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ He orders us to say this to every single reader of the Qur'an. Allahumma wa Allah. مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ The one who owns all dominion. مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ You give your dominion to whomever you will. Now that means, whether somebody praises Allah, whether somebody denies Allah, Allah can give him his mulk. This is, this is Malik al-Mukhtar, the one who has total control of what he wants to do. If he was just a king who gives the people who only worship him, then some people might have objected, objected and said, hmm, so he's got no power to give the people who don't worship him. But Allah gives whoever he will. تُتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ 
and you can seize your dominion, your power, from whoever you want. He seizes it from who? From whether it's a, an enemy of his or whether it's a, a good servant who is worshipping Allah, who is in the path of Allah, who is on, in sujood. If Allah wants to take that power away, he can take the power away. That's, that's Malikul Mukhtar. He has the power to, to do that. To izzu man tasha wa to zillu man tasha. You dignify, you give izza to whoever you want, you degrace whoever you want. So this is in Surah Ali Imran. But one of the things of the, one of the characteristics of Al-Malik being, being a good king is Al-Adl, that you have got justice. And Imam Qurtubi, he narrates a hadith um, from Bukhari and Muslim. It's a part of a hadith that, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he quotes from Allah azza wa jal by saying, An al-malik an al-dayyan, that Allah azza wa jal, he says, I am the king, I am the one who has just, with justice I give, with justice he gives. So then he moves on to say that one of the things that Allah Azza wa Jal has the, has the power and any king has the power to keep to themselves something they don't want to reveal to anyone else. And Allah Azza wa Jal has kept to himself something he doesn't want to reveal to you. Many things he has kept but from those things that he has kept, Allah has said if you look in the last part of Surah Luqman, um, you will find Allah says, um, Allah has in Allah in the Hawil Musa'a. Allah has the knowledge of the of the of the last you know when the when the last day will come, he has the knowledge of that. When exactly when the rains will come, how it will come, how it will be brought down, the entire thing Allah knows. It's not just when the rains will come. So just, just because they forecast the rain doesn't mean they have the power to do that. Yunazilul ghaith means that Allah Azza wa Jal, He brings it down. He has the power to bring it down and He knows to bring it down, when to bring it down, how to bring it down, exactly what. Which drop of water out of the billions of drops of water, every single drop has been calculated where to go. And every drop an angel has that got that one drop, one angel brings it down. Allah has told billions of angels with his, with his power to say, Can you, imagine? you just can't comprehend how Allah Azza wa Jal, how great he is. Every drop that comes down, when it will come down, where it will go, how far the wind will blow it, exactly where it will fall, how heavily it will drop, how much of rain it will supply, where that water will go after that, whether it will go into the roots of a tree, where that water will travel into that tree, how long that tree will, will be sustained from that one, one drop of water, how, what that drop of water, those drops of water will create, how many fruits they will bring, how many people they will drink from that water he supplied, how many animals will drink, how many valleys will be created, how many streams will get water, what's the quantity of water where it's reached for a stream, when those river banks will break, all that Allah, when you nazzil al is in all of that. So he's got the power. So you can make your forecast and your weather forecast and say it's going to rain tomorrow, 12 o'clock. They get it wrong or whatever, but you cannot have the knowledge of Allah. So when Allah has said he knows what's in the womb. Today Allah, today subhanAllah, some people say that because they know that there's going to be a male or a female, they think that that's not the extent. If you look in the womb, what does that mean? That means Allah knows in the womb. Allah knows in the womb, that child, who he is, what's his color going to be, what's his face going to be, his features, his hands, his arms, how it's going to grow, what type of food the mother will take for that baby to be fed, when it will be fed, when it will kick, when it will push. Finally, when it comes out, that baby, from the moment it's come out till the moment of his death, every single time it will eat. Allah sends an angel to the womb to say, write every single time it will eat and drink. For the whole life, in one go, it writes it down. Bikat bi rizqihi wa ajali, its whole duration on the earth. Everything is written down. So when Allah says he knows what's in the womb, he knows the whole extent of this whole life on this earth. And then after that, until the day of judgment, and whether it's going to be shaqiyan or sa'idah, go to heaven, go to jannah or go to jahannam, Allah even knows that. So don't compare with Allah's knowledge by saying that you've got a scan and you know whether it's a boy or a girl. And now, so why did, you know, you, you've now come, you know, you, you've now compared with something with Allah, has some comparison. <laughs> No soul knows what he's going to earn tomorrow. No one knows. 
No, he's kept that to himself. No living creature, no dead creature, nothing knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Only Allah has kept that to himself. And he has said, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتٍ You don't know which earth you're going to die in. So you can plan, I'm going to stay in England all my life and I'm not going to go out of here and I'm going to die, make sure I die here. You can buy your cover, you can buy your grave in, you know, Wolfenstall, you can buy it in Hainault. You can say, this is it, you know, to your whole family. When I die, then bury me over there. If Allah has planned you die in another country, you will go last minute to another country. Last minute, you say, quickly, let me just go over there, come back. Well, you go over there, you die there, you bury there, yeah. finish. Allah has kept that in his, in his uh, knowledge. So there are certain things Imam, Imam Qurtubi says that he, Allah has the right to keep that. Now, as a <coughs> as an, uh, kind of an end uh, to this, now one of the things Imam Qurtubi says before I go to the, one of the last things I want to say is that he says, because Allah, Allah has given me, if my Iman in Allah as Malik, as the king, or Malik, as the, as the one who, who has given me the power to own something on, the, on this earth, if my Iman is strong in him, then I will not be someone who is stingy. St a stingy person, his Iman is weak. Because he thinks if he spends, then tomorrow he will not have the same. Allah will not provide him. Imam Qurtubi says, if your Iman is, is strong, you give. You spend, don't be stingy because the one who, you never had it in the first place. Allah gave everything in this whole, the whole bank balance, the money, the credit, whatever you got, the, your, your pockets, whatever you own, Allah gave you that in the first place. And Allah has the power to give you that a second time over. So don't be stingy, you, you, you spend it. Now, the last thing that I, I, I want to um, quote from, from this is, there are 10 points which Imam Qurtubi, uh, rahimahullah, he, he then says that where Allah Azzawajal is completely different from any other king or any other person who has any ownership. So he said, number one, number one is wujudul iftiqar al malik ilayh. Every king, whoever that king is on the earth, has to remember that they need him to survive. <laughs> there is no king on this earth who can have his kingdom without Allah looking after him. Okay. Number two, he says, mulka kulli malikin minhu. The, the, any king that got his kingdom on this earth, only Allah gave it to him. So they mustn't forget that. Number three, shaykun fayakun. Only Allah has the power to say something, be, and it is. Kun fayakun. No other king has that power. Fourth, subutul mulki lahu qabla wujudil. Mulki wal Mamluk. He said, before anyone, anyone on the whole of the earth, anyone had any milk, any ownership, any dominion, any power, anything they owned, Allah Azza wa owned everything. Number five, istighna'uhu anil a'wan. Allah doesn't need any helpers. Allah doesn't need any helpers. Every king needs helpers. Allah needs no helpers. Number six, umumul mulki fi dunya wal akhira. The fact that any king on this earth will, will be a king for a short period of time, only on this earth. But Allah is the king of this entire earth forever and for the next world as well. So there's no, there's no comparison to him. Number seven. No one has got any count of how much Allah has got in his power when it comes to his soldiers, when it comes to his servants, when every king you can count how much of an army they've got, how powerful they are, you can make a calculation. But with Allah, you can't make any calculation because it's endless. Number eight, anna mulkahu la yabid, that Allah's, Allah's mulk or his dominion will last forever, will last forever. No other king will have that power. What tasya, the, the, the ninth is, that no one will be able to, to come and share anything with Allah in his power, in, in his mulk, in his dominion. With a king, you can start sharing. You know, wazir can come or someone high can come and, you know, sit next to the king and the king might give him some authority, you, you know, you do this fine. And they can have some kind of relationship where they, where they have some shirka or some, some, some sharing in that, that dominion. With Allah, this does not happen. And the last thing that he says is the fact that Allah in his power, whatever he owns, 
not a single second or a split second goes away without Allah fully watching, fully knowing, fully knowing the entire extent of whatever is happening in his kingdom. So he has said in Surah Al-Hadid, ayah number three, هو الأول والآخر والظاهر والباطن Allah is the first, he is the last, everything, he is the, he is the, the inner, the outer. Allah, Allah has said, like we've read just now in Surah Ali Imran, Ayah number 26, al He is the owner of the whole dominion. And he will give, Allah Azza wa Jal, he will give to whoever he wants. This is one thing that Allah can do, no other king can do, which is to give and to give, to give without any limit. When Allah wants to give to someone, he can give and give and give and give without any limit. That is only Allah Azza wa Jal, no other king, no one else can do that. So just before we, we break up, I'd like to go over the names. So please, everyone together after three, yeah? We're learning this together. So after three, one, two, three. Huwa Allah, come on, come on. Huwa Allah, ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-huwa rahman rahim al-maliku quddus Next week, inshallah, we'll do uh, the name Quddus and perhaps Salam as well. If, if there's um, not enough to say in Khudus, Jazakumullah khair wa akhu da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.